So I'm very honored to present our next speaker, my friend and colleague, Dr. Sharon Mermis. She's the head of the Dermato Oncology Clinic, Center for Melanoma and Cancer Immunotherapy, Charette Institute of Oncology in Adassa Medical Center. She's also the CSO of Emory's Pharma. Sharon is going to share with us the topic of preventing skin toxicity induced by EGFR inhibitors by topically blocking drug receptor interaction. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roni. Um, I want to take the opportunity and thank the organizers and Roni especially for giving me the opportunity to present Emily's Pharma today. And like she said, we're talking about developing a topical solution for EGFR inhibitor induced skin toxicities. Um, we're going to dwell right in. Um, cancer targeted therapy has rev revolutionized cancer therapy in the last 20 years already. And specifically, I'm going to talk about EGFR and cancer. And targeted therapy for EGFR is very common in oncology with head and neck cancer patients, colorectal pa patients, breast cancer. And today with personalized medicine, we see more patients receiving these treatments. But side by side to the targeted benefits in the cancer, we also see um, um, skin targeted toxicity where the EGFR in the skin is the same EGFR in cancer cells, and these patients suffer a lot from their skin um, rashes. Around 90% of patients that receive these drugs will have some skin issue and will come into my clinic, where we have the papulopustular rash, which is very common. We also have what's called nail problems, and we even have dryness that is very problematic for these patients. But um, as you know, this is a rare disease um, symposium, and I'm talking about 90% of a very common treatment. But usually, about five minutes into my talk, I stand in front of an audience that looks like this. <laughs> Oncologists, researchers, investors, they're not very interested when we talk about cancer, and I'm coming up, I'm very nice, and I'm talking about an itch. We are here with immunotherapy, bispecific antibodies, CAR T cells, survival, and actually, I'm here to voice the patients, something like what you're doing with rare diseases, with a very orphan topic. So if you have two minutes, you're all going to join me in my clinic now. And we're going to meet one of our very nice patients. She came on day one of her cetuximab. It's an antibody for EGFR with colon cancer. And she came into my clinic. And I explained to take a lukewarm bath, to be careful in the sun, and to put a lot of lubricants on her skin. Two weeks later, she comes in for her next treatment. And this is what she looks like. She's a kindergarten teacher. She will not go to work anymore. And she actually stopped the treatments. So this is the popular pustular rash. And I'm trying to get everybody's attention. Not only you, you are a very um, observant audience. But it's very hard to get the oncology and the researchers' interest in this topic. So this, you understand, is very hard to go around work every day with this rash. Now, I'll go a little lower in the clinical and, and the um, medical world. We're talking about the nail problem. Again, think oncology, think CARS T cells, and I'm trying to get people interested in the nails of my patients. And as you can see, this is a very big problem. You cannot type on your computer. You cannot cut an onion. And actually, I do close patients' buttons in the clinic. So this is a very debilitating problem with a very severe imp um, impairment to quality of life. Again, it's not that rare, so we do have a protocol. We, we are clinicians, we like criterion, we like protocols, we have a protocol. We tell them, be careful in the sun, put some sunscreen on, emollients, and they do get two months of antibiotics. I'll mention a word about this treatment. But the problem is, it's not very effect effective, and actually most patients have some dose reductions or even stop treatment, as I showed you the kindergarten teacher before. So, in this clinic where everybody's talking about the new bispecific antibody, I'm sitting there with a lukewarm bath and I'm saying we should do better. Even um, in this era of new medications, we can think of something a little more intelligent than this. So how about if we can reverse these toxicities by topically blocking the drug only in skin, like I show you here. And the idea was this. Sorry, because I don't have it in front of me. But if we block EGFR binding to the EGFR only on the skin cells, 
if we can reduce skin toxicity by reactivating the pathway if we block the, the oncology drug. And of course, this should not be toxic to the keratinocytes. And we need to apply it topically. It needs to be delivered into the deeper layer of the skin, which is a challenge. And we don't want it to penetrate systemically, of course, because we don't want to interfere with a cancer treatment. So this was the hypothesis. And I'll start with blocking the, um, the cancer treatment in the skins. And here I was joined by my colleague, Professor Ofra Benny, um, a few years back. And we did a very simple ELISA assay where we screened about 3,000 mo molecules that are um, uh, uh, approach appropriate for, for topical treatments. And we did find a family of molecules that was very efficient. And what I'm showing you here is our lead, SDT11, which about 90% of the times blocks it finish efficiently the monoclonal antibodies um, binding to the EGFR. And not only in ELISA, but when we look here in a biochemical assay, if you look at the green curve, it's the affinity between Erbitux, the monoclonal antibody in EGFR. When you add SDT11, you see flattening of the curve and actually 500 decrease in the affinity between the binding of the antibody to the receptor. Now, as I said, we, ne we need to show that by blocking this interaction, we actually reactivate the pathway, and we have shown it in cell lines. What you see here is a decrease in the phosphorylated EGFR with the cancer drug. And when you add the cancer drug with our lead molecule, you can see reactivation of the pathway. And we were able to show it in full human skin as well. Here you see a hair follicle, EGFR with chetuxkimab. There's no phospho-EGFR staining, but when we add SDT11 again, the staining comes back and we reactivate the pathway. Now the mechanism of an action was a bit of a um, problem identifying. We did first in silica docking and we were very disappointed to find out that our molecule does not bind in the binding area but very close to it. Luckily for us, good researchers do good work and in 2012 a group of researchers were trying to figure out why patients develop resistant to these monoclonal antibodies and what they did, point mutations in the EGFR and they found that specific point mutations, even two, can actually um, uh, stop the binding of cetuximab and panitumumab to this EGF receptor. And actually, when we looked again in our molecule, we found that it actually binds to the same um, amino acids, one or two amino acids, that are crucial for the binding of the cancer drugs. This summer, we had two very important milestones. First, our paper was published in Science Translational Medicine. Um, Dr. Friedman was the first writer in his PhD thesis. And exactly the same month, we launched Emrys Pharma with NGC Healthcare to get this um, novel development as fast as we can to patients. So this is our team. Me and Professor Benny was lucky to be joined by Liora Aronova, our CEO, and Johan Chazut, our drug development, um, head of the drug development. And we focused these fast, past few months, which were uh, very challenging in so many ways, um, on the topical formulations and drug delivery. And I'll say a word about the delivery, which I told you has to reach the deep layers of the skin. Um, and this challenge, um, I, I, as I want to show you, we need to actually get the SDT11 into the hair follicles. And Ronnie is a dermatologist. I show her this picture, and I'll ask her, where do we need to go? And she can say, this is an acne form eruption. You can see acne in the adolescents and the same rash in our patients. And again, if you look at biopsies from these patients, you can see that the insult in the skin is perifollicular. And this happens because EGFR is very rich in these areas. And we were able to develop a formulation that enables SDT11 to actually concentrate in the hair follicles, which is a big challenge. And this we have shown in the last few months. Um, and we also have very stable and non-toxic formulations. So we went, started our journey to try to improve patients' quality of life and give a voice to these patients. And we believe that our medication, if we, don't e if we stop the insult before it starts, we may have a very good effective treatment for this rash. We do believe that if we have a good treatment for the rash, we will also have better optimal antineoplastic doses and maybe improve survival of these patients. And a word about antibiotics. These patients receive a two months of antibiotics. And like I said, it's a huge problem in the world with antibiotic resistance, and this treatment is not good enough. And we also know in oncology today that patients who receive long terms of antibiotics do not respond as well to immune therapy. So oncologists today try not to give these antibiotics. So we are in a very big need for these um, treatments. Um, 
So this is our first in the pipeline for the monoclonal antibodies for EGFR, and our vision is, vision is to have new treatments to develop other targeted therapies. I will say that amivantamab, which is a new bispecific EGFR met um, antibody, has very bad rashes on the same as other monoclonal antibodies for EGFR, and we also have already preliminary results that show that SET11 blocks this antibody as well because it binds similarly to cetuximab. So we developed a targeted therapy for prevention and treatment of skin toxicity in Emory's Pharma's, I, we believe is a game changer and a new novelty in this area. And I want to say that this project has many people who backed it and helped us reach this state. The Hadassah, of course, Hadassah Cancer Research Institute and Hadassit, the Hebrew University and Yisum, the Israel Innovation Authority, and of course, NGT Healthcare, who believed in this project and took us to where we are today. Thank you.